Would you recommend advertising on social media like IG, TikTok for a organic audience? So to be honest, I've never have done that right in the past. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't work. I think the closest thing I tried was a was doing Facebook ads. And uh, my experience with that was it was building awareness around my company, but not necessarily people that are looking to book now. The thing about cleaning business is that people go to various places to look for cleaning services, right? But when they want a cleaning service, they want they want to book it now. OK, so we're with Google or with with like uh, social media ads and like uh, Facebook ads. They may not really be in the they, may, they really not may not be in the service for looking for it now. But if they see they're like, oh, man, that's cool. I want to get my house clean one day. Let me take a screenshot or let me save that or let me call them to get some information because that'd be totally awesome. I, I, you know, my mom's coming over next month. I want to get, you know, so it builds awareness like that but not necessarily where like, it's like, hey, I just saw your ad. I want to book my cleaning service today. Okay. That's like very once in a few between. And when I, when I did that service, I had a very large marketing budget. So it wasn't like, let me test and try this out. Uh, because yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, but you know, also I was on TikTok too. I'm not even on TikTok that much, but I was on TikTok the other day and I saw like these videos of people cleaning and they had like some mad reviews, like mad like uh views, like crazy. So test it out, see see if it works. Like I said, I, I love testing out everything. So test it out, see if it works, and come back and tell us about it. Um, yes, I'm still waiting on my Google. Yes, yeah, no, that Google, ugh, but it's well worth it. It is well worth the investment, y'all. So please, whatever it takes. Get that Google verified. Get that blue check mark. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, Steve does help uh, with GMBs. So, for those that may not know, but you guys, please go check out his training course. He is insane. Like, he was just uh, a regular student of the academy. Um, I did not know him prior to talking with him. And um, come to find out, like, he actually has a marketing company that he does. GMB services for for other service providers like uh, junk removal type of companies and plumbers and things like that, right? And then he saw me on YouTube and he's like, "Yo, I should totally do this too. I do the marketing. This is a cool business. Let me match it together." And um, so after speaking with him and he came and taught our first class, I was like, "Yo, you got to do this on a regular." So he he's gonna now be teaching on a regular. And then I was like, and then also. I need us to have a deal. I need you to give us a deal. I want to partner with you. <laughs> and my people need a deal. So that way, if they can't do this, because your training was super dope. It was super detailed and really, really good. But, you know, it was, it, it was like this for me. I was like, what of a what? To do what? Why? Where? How did you do that? Show me that again. So he does offer the service as well. And he's given us a really great deal too. The link is inside the Academy. Send me a message as well. Or you guys can send him a message. Like there's a whole Google page where you can ask him questions. So if you guys have Google questions, go to the Google My Business space, tag his name and go ahead and ask, ask him all the questions, okay? He's very generous with, with his knowledge, which I super love. I love partnering with people like that. Yeah, Lauren, it's, it's, it's the way it can be frustrating. I'm, I'm opening up another company and like, I'm waiting, I'm waiting on my, and it's super frustrating because I've been waiting on Steve to get to it, <laughs> but like, it's still, we had to resubmit our verification, verification video three times y'all. Okay. So look, I know how to set it up and I'm still having issues. Okay. So Google is just really tripping right now. Okay, good questions, y'all, tonight. Any other questions? Yeah, I was trying, I was going through um, Booking Cola. What, what's the difference between a rescheduled and um, postponed booking? So postpone, I really don't like postpone. Postpone, to me, I feel like is like a reschedule, but without a date. 
because they want to avoid the cancellation fee, right? So it's like, oh, I don't need it now, but I don't know when I want to get it. So I'm just going to postpone it, okay? Um, where the reschedule is like, hey, I want to reschedule for next Friday at four o'clock. Um, and it's the actual date uh, attached and associated with that, where I feel like with the postpone, it's like they're just trying to avoid that cancellation fee. Okay. That's what I figured. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that one. Any other questions, you guys? We're almost wrapping up. We're going over some time. <laughs> I know there took some time for y'all to get on here. I know we haven't had our Tuesday trainings in a minute, but I do want to make sure that I get you guys questions that you guys have. I had one more question. Sorry. No, you're fine. Don't apologize. Um. So for Checker, I just ran my first background check for a cleaner nice. and she said that she completed it, but I didn't get an email from Checker saying that it was started or it was finished. So I was just, just wondering like if, you have had that experience or like how I'm not sure why they didn't send me anything in so, regards to like what the updates were when you logged into the platform do you see any any that's done or listed on there it just says pending but she told me that she finished it well well she could have finished it filling it out but now they are actually like running it and doing the things so just because oh, she's okay. filling it out, yeah, it doesn't mean that it's done. And then so like once they're done searching all the database and figuring out all the things, then they'll notify you um, and let you know that, you know, that profile, that 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 it, that it came back. Okay. All right. And then the cleaner, so she told me after I told her that we do background checks that she has a misdemeanor because she was given a false check. But in my head, I'm just like, I don't think you would get in trouble for cashing a check that someone else made false. So I think maybe she may have wrote the bad check, but she's making it seem like mm -hmm. she didn't. So I just, I'm just not really sure. I guess I can wait to see what the background check says. Yeah. Cause I mean, like, cause then it's like, it's an integral thing. And you're wondering like, how long ago was that? Now, I do give people credit when they can come and confess, right? Because, yeah. you know, it takes a lot for people to to tell some embarrassing things that happened in their past. So I give people credit. I'll actually like, like, hey, if you want to let me know anything before I win this background check, you know, we can have a conversation. And, you know, so I'll actually give them that pre heads up warning. Um, but like you said, now it's kind of like, oh, is she lying? Is she like, can I really trust her? So I would say, trust your gut, <laughs> use some discernment, but, um, and then just kind of see what it says. Cause like the things that really, I don't, I like a hard nose is like definitely theft, any kind of like bodily harm or, you know, anything like, you know, crazy, crazy because like I'm trusting them to go into people's homes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see. Does anybody know how much Backing checks are through go through gusto. They, is it banking checks or if they are included? So I I believe what it is. Uh, I can't remember this off top, but they do have a way for you to send a check, and I believe it's. I want to say that it's actually you, that is actually manually sending the check to them but you are putting in the information on Gusto so it can be reported and included when you do your 1099. I would probably definitely check with their customer service. They do have a chat customer service and sometimes Gusto chat regular consumer or like customer chat customer service doesn't work. So sometimes what I do is I'll go, I'll log out and pretend like, like and I'll do like their sales chat, like their chat in the very front to where like you have not signed in whatsoever like that's like their sales chat because they're trying to close new customers and I'll ask them there <laughs> and depending on what the scenario is they'll transfer me to their regular customer service or they'll just answer it for me 
What is the information located for keywords for SEO? Where is the information located for, for it? So there is, um, let me, I'll tag you in it. Cause I, I'm like, I can see it, but I don't know hundred percent. And I'm pushing cause I'm moving things around. Um, let me add that to my list. What was the other thing I said I was gonna do? Oh, email template, email holiday template. Um, okay. Can you leave me a review for Yelp, Jasmine? <laughs> My business name is Jack's Expert Cleaning Services. Joy, love. And it's, I think I saw you put a post in the main group and I was going to mention this too. So for Yelp, Unfortunately, Yelp is the only platform you do not want to ask for actual manual reviews for that platform. You can ask for reviews for Thumbtack, Google. Steve recommended that you only ask people to leave a review on Google if they're in the city you offer services in, right? Leases and SAC. If you're in Atlanta, then there would be no benefit of you leaving a review on her platform, okay? Um, so that's for Google, right? For Thumbtack, you can ask. For, for Yelp, you don't want to ask at all. They have a crazy master black hat algorithm where they can tell when reviews are asked for and they will hide them and they will not let them be visible, okay? And I tried some tr crazy ways to try to get reviews to show up on Yelp. Like they really want authentic Yelpers review, like, like these Yelpers, right? These five-star Yelper people that's out here, <laughs> okay? Those are the reviews. Like you want somebody that that loved your service, that that also happened to be a Yelper and that will organically go into your platform and leave a review. That's who you want leaving a review for your thumbtack. I mean, for your Yelp. When is the last day of the week to enter cleaners pay so they can get paid on the following Friday? So if you have the contractor, um, the contractor one, if you have that one, um, then you have to do it four days. So it would need to be done on Monday at four p.m. I think it's Pacific Standard Time. I'm not 100% sure. I would definitely recommend checking, but I know it's Monday by four and I believe it's Pacific Standard Time. But don't quote me on that that time zone. That, that time zone isn't important, right? But it is due on Monday um, and then it'll be processed to your cleaners on Friday morning. They'll get the direct deposit Friday morning. How do we get reviews on Yelp? How do we get our first cleaning job on Yelp? So Yelp is just, it's, it's a really hard platform to tap in for Yelp. Now, depending on where you may be at, they do have this call uh, Yelp local, or I don't forgot what it's called. I, I just got corrected on what the actual name is when I saw it over the weekend. But when you're setting up your Yelp account, if you go to... I think it's either messages or leads, whichever, like tap on either one of those, then you'll see something that says like Yelp something, right? And it's like, and it's basically like, it's, it's basically it's like the Google LSA version for Yelp, okay? So it's like Yelp local leads where people are looking for leads from that platform. But still though, with that, even with that option on Yelp, um, you still need to have reviews because they will click on it and you'll have to pay for it, but they won't respond. They won't follow up because they are looking for reviews. Like real Yelpers, like people that get, that look for services on Yelp, they look for reviews. Like they're on Yelp because they want a service that has been tested, tried and true. So Yelp it may take some time to build, okay? You still want to have the platform up because you never know when somebody will organically find you and call you or if somebody that books your service and they happen to be a Yelper and they will go and leave a review. So Yelp will just make, just may take some time. So I would definitely focus on Google or Thumbtack. And this is why I love Thumbtack so much, you guys, because Thumbtack 
can give you that instant turnaround. Like I understand that Yelp takes time. I definitely understand SEO takes time. Google right now, with it getting how long it takes to get verified is definitely taking some time, okay? So Thumbtack is the only platform that you could create your entire profile, fill it out completely, do it accurately and correct as best as possible, and you can turn on your ads or you can turn on your leads and you can get lead the same day, the same time. So that's why I love Thumbtack. I just learned now not to put all my eggs in one basket, okay? Um, so it's like while you're investing in Thumbtack, you still want to be building out your Google. You still want to be building out your Google My Business. You still want to be working on your SEO. Any other last minute questions? Okay, guys, we got about five more minutes and we'll wrap it up. For, hey, Jason, it's for hey. the email marketing. Where would I go to find, like, e well, customers to market to? So... You can like build a list, right? You can build an email list through Indeed. Um, that's say Indeed? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say Indeed. I mean to say LinkedIn. Through LinkedIn, right? If you're wanting to reach out to like real estate agents, uh, property management um, managers, um, people like that to partner with them. So that way you can offer their services to your clients, right? You can also see if you can find now how you find this list. I don't know. Right. Um, somebody did tell me, I think through Redfin and are you, are you familiar with wholesale, like mortgage wholesale? Um, yes. As far as like wholesaling mm -hmm. houses. Oh yes. I so know. What's that website to where you can get a list off of, like, to get a list to call people to see if they want to wholesale their house? What's that? What's the name of that popular website? Is it um, PropStream? Yes. So somebody did mention something about, you know, getting a list off of there from people that have recently sold their homes or recently purchased their homes. And then you can cold call, message, email them and offer them a move in and move out cleaning service. Mm -hmm. okay. So you, so that's an option as well. And like I said, you know, building those relationships on LinkedIn and reaching out to real estate agents, property managers, moving companies, and, you know, offering your services to their clients as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see. How do you feel about other platforms like Nextdoor Home Advisor? Home Advisor, I'm not too keen on Home Advisor. Um, but some I I I I I like I think I spoke to one person in like these last eight plus years that like actually told me something good about Home Advisor. Um, or was it Home Advisor or Angie? Home Advisor and Angie's the same thing. Angie's just got rebranded from Angie's list. Um so, I mean, all of these platforms, you know, you, you just have to test them out because you you never know what it might be like in your market. Now, I do like Nextdoor. I never actually invested in Nextdoor. I kind of ended up on Nextdoor organically um, when I when I was getting leads from Nextdoor because it was like somebody, a, a client, you know, commented our name and then we were just kind of like in this loop for like a couple of months of like just getting leads from next door. So next door is really awesome for organic um building of of leads and they also do have paid lead options as well. Do you add your website to Yelp? Yes. So on Yelp there is a there is like when you set up your profile, you do there is a space for you to add your actual web address like your URL web address on Yelp. Are you an advocate for business cards? No, I'm not. If so, do you recommend investing in really nice cards that depend on your target audience? The only the only way I would say for I'm not I'm I'm also not like a in-person type of person. Okay. I'm a real 
um, uh, what's that word? Introvert, homebody person. Okay. Um, like, I don't know, like, I, I just don't really like going out to events and doing all the things. Okay. When I do, I'm, I'm being forced to, okay. I'm being real pressured to do it. So the only reason why I would say that's a good idea, like if you plan on networking. So like I was just mentioning, talking about like the real, like building a relationship with the real estate agents, right? So let's say if you plan to go to an event where there's a lot of local real estate agents, those are really great partnerships. Like I developed great partnerships with those, with individuals like that, but on through LinkedIn. Okay. Because that's where they, that's where they're at because they're building relationships. They're creating a network. They're finding clients on that space as too. And they actually need our services. When a client moves into a house, they need us. When a client moves out of the house, they need it. When a client is trying to sell a house, they need it. Right. So they, they will need our services. That's why I love partnering with real estate agents. Um, so if you plan to do local events, you know, networking events like that, then yes, having a business card would be needed. Um, but otherwise, like passing out the, the cards and the door knockers and the things like that, I'm not a big advocate on it. And I'm not even saying that it doesn't work. I think it just depends, like, it depends on who your market is. Like, I know where my market, I know exactly where my market is going to look for their services. Thumbtack and Google, right? I, I Yes, Yelp, but I'm not, I never really had much success on Yelp. I tried for years to get onto Yelp, like years and years. And I spoke with like, like fellow business owners that's doing freaking amazing on Yelp. And they give me all their pointers and I still did not do good on Yelp. And I just realized that, you know, Yelp is not meant for everybody. Not every platform is, is meant for every single person in every single area and market. So uh, let's see. Yelp gave me a 300. Oh yeah, of course they are. Cause they're in the business to get you into their business. Um, and the, and you'll get a lot of calls too. You'll definitely get a lot of calls from them. Um, Yelp gave me $300 bonus to start my leads. And I noticed in my area, you get more leads on Yelp than Google LSA. That's why I really want reviews. Um, you are completely accurate without leads. You will not get replies or bookings. My VA has been messaging them every day, but no response. Yes. I know it's the same, it's the same way. Um, and this is why I know that exactly because like, I don't, I don't do the Yelp, right? I, I gave up on that a long time ago, but we do have VA clients just like you that took advantage of that offer. And our, we do the whole following up shebang and it's like crickets. So I'm sorry though. Um, I hope you get some reviews now, maybe see if you know, one thing that I tried and like I said, it just never worked for me, but it doesn't mean that's not gonna work for you. But I used to like look up local restaurants or I would look up other local cleaning companies in my area. And I will look to see uh, any Yelpers that use their services. Okay. And I would message them and be like, hey, I'm explain, I'm trying to build up my reviews on Yelp. I see that you're a five-star Yelper. I would love to offer your next cleaning services at half off for uh for an awesome review, right? So you can you can test that out and try that and see if that works. You know, going in knowing that it it's 50 50 chance, it could possibly work, or the algorithm can find out <laughs> and you know, they got eagle eyes somewhere and and they don't put it through. So you can know you can test out that as well. Good question though. Okay, I will take one more question, you guys, and then we'll wrap up. And then we will be back on next week. And then for those that are interested in the next boot camp that we'll have on November 30th, like I mentioned, you guys, again, for those that are current members, um, whether you are a monthly member 
or you pay the lifetime access, um, it is a $300 fee for you guys to be able to join the bootcamp, okay? If you want to get lifetime access where you no longer have to pay the monthly service fee, you can pay the one-time fee and you get access to the bootcamp and the lifetime access to the academy. And you can partner, I partner with Kalarna, so you guys can still do that on a monthly membership. So I'm only gonna have 10 in this class again. Um, and so the wait list has opened up. Um, I think we have like two to three people signed up today, which was like very shocking. Um, I was not expecting that <laughs> whatsoever. I was trying to determine if I was going to have it again. And um, people had already like signed up like, oh, okay. So I guess the wait list is open because <laughs> they're already signed up waiting for the next one. Um, you are so welcome, love. But um, until next time, you guys continue to ask all your questions inside the academy, um, continue to help provide support to others that's needing assistance. And, um, and let's really grow our businesses. And like I said, I will post the email holiday template and the SEO keywords inside the academy as well. Okay. Joy, I see you came off mute, love. Did you want to ask a, a, a question going out? Yes. Um, when yes. it comes to refunds, how do you handle it with the cleaners? As far as like, if you have to issue a customer a refund, if they complain about like a service yeah. that the cleaner did? Do very you like question. alter the payment to the cleaner? So very good question. So with the refund, this is why I like to process um, payroll the following week. So for example, on this Friday, cleaners are getting paid from jobs they did on last week. And my hopes is that when we have our, our next morning follow-up call with the client, I can be in front of any kind of scenarios. So if they want a refund, a reclean, or a partial refund, or a discount, or whatever situation they may not, they may want, I'm hoping that I can solve it with the reclean or discount. Worst case scenario is a refund, but I'm I'm taking care of that situation up front. So that way I'm not already have paid my cleaner. And then I'm trying to figure out, yo, like remember that job you did? I need half of that money back. I need that money back, right? Or your next job, you're not going to get paid because you owe me for X, Y, and Z. Um, like they're just they're just going to leave. Um, so, but because we do work with independent contractors, um, there's a couple of different ways you can handle this. Um, because we work in independent contractors, they are paid for job completion. So if they did a job and they were supposed to get paid one fifty, and I had to give them um a hundred dollars off their service i'm taking money off of her so she's not going to get the 150 she may only get 100 if i had to do a full refund then she may only she may she's not going to get anything because i had to do a full refund if the client was extremely happy with her service and i had to send somebody else in her replacement because they did not want her back whatsoever to do the reclean then depending on the percentage of the portion of the house that needed to be recleaned i would have to subtract that from her pay because i now i have to send somebody else to go do that job okay the issue that i had was uh the client she did a she did a good job but everything that she couldn't reach she didn't clean so oh, Jesus. Was, yeah so the top you know ca uh, ca the top cabinets in the the uh, kitchen like yeah I had somebody like that too and I was like why do you have why don't you have a step up stool or a ladder or a pole um so so did you have to give a did you do a reclean and send somebody else out there or did you have to give them a percentage off well, I asked her um, if she could do a reclean, and she felt she told me that she felt like she did a good job, and she oh. shouldn't be, she shouldn't have to do a reclean. And um, as far as the as, as far as the customer goes, uh, I asked the customer, but by that time, the customer had already did the work because she had somebody oh. moving in like that next morning. Oh, okay. So she she ended up doing it herself. Okay. okay. So I just I I offered her a refund, and I. I refunded her like a certain percentage of the uh, yeah. amount and and then I told the cleaner that um I had to change her payment and she was like oh she just basically got mad about that whole situation yeah and that's fine they're gonna get mad but I mean how can she say she did a good job but you only clean what you reach like I'm extremely short I'm like 
barely touching five four. So I can't touch no top cabinets either. And I, clients would get upset. They'd be like, okay, yes, you know, I took care of like the knob on down. They're gonna be like, uh, but what's not all there? <laughs> yeah. I got to carry a step up stool. So it's like, you know, she can't say she did a good job and she missed portion of the house knowingly. Like you know yeah. she not didn't do it. So yeah. But she reached she recently did a clean because I told her to scratch your out. And she recently did a clean and she did better. And I told her she had to take a stepping stool with her to the clean. So she did excellent this time around. But yeah. yeah. Hey, sometimes scarcity is necessary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's why also like when I when I give them my list of requirements, I do put that asterisk mark of a step up stool. Because look, y'all know if you're short, if you're short, you know you're short, you need a step up stool. So like, that's what's necessary in order for you to make sure that the cleaning service is, is done completely up to par. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about when it comes to post-construction cleaning, like how much do you hmm. add for post-construction? So for post-construction cleaning, you don't want to add anything. You want a whole separate pricing strategy um, because depending on what, what it is and like how much... Like that dust, that construction dust is a beast. I, I don't care if they did just the cabinets, it gets everywhere. So everywhere in the house has to be touched. The walls, the ceiling, little, you know, figurines or whatever they have throughout the house has to be touched. So you want to make sure that you're charging a percent, charging a certain amount per square footage of the mm -hmm. home. So if you're charging... 60 cents per square foot, right? Um, because you're literally going to have to touch and clean every surface of the home. And again, with that cleaning service, you want to make sure that they have all the right equipment because depending on the job that they're, they're going to need a shot back. You can't sweep up dust. You have to suck that stuff up. Yeah. I recently had a clean that the lady said that she removed the popcorn ceiling in her house. Oh, so, geez. Yeah. But it, but she did a good job. The, the the cleaner did a good job. But oh, I don't think I quoted her. her properly though. Yeah. I don't you, think yeah. And that's okay. Mistakes come because um I know um I know my and my first post construction cleanups were not were not good. Bridget um she's one of my one on one clients and we had a talk on last week and she just did a a whole seven eleven post-construction cleaning so she may be able to help you and give you some tips on pricing you can reach out to her in the academy but um post-construction you want to make sure that you're charging accurate for that because you're having to clean and touch every surface of that of that property or that home okay thank you you're welcome you're welcome all right, you guys, I hope you guys have an amazing evening. Again, you guys continue to ask all questions in the academy and I'll be there to answer them. I love seeing others when you guys respond and answer and help others. That's, that really just brightened up my little heart. And then um, I'm going to post those extra things inside the academy and I will see you guys later. All right, good night, y'all.